my name is Jamie Myers and I'm the Vice President of Education and Community Engagement at PBS SoCal and we're so happy that you could be here to join us. So 13 episodes were created for Arab American Stories and you're going to see this evening um, three pieces of those stories, some, uh, most of which are connected with some very exciting guests that we have in the audience. Specifically, we're just excited that the series itself can start a conversation and a dialogue um, in connection to both Arab American uh, history, culture, and a celebration of the really exciting achievements that are happening within um, that culture. I want to make a special shout out to um, Classic Lebanese Cuisine and especially Kamal who actually did all of the food for this evening. You're going to get to have a real treat afterwards. We have a, um, an actual uh, coffee and pastries evening afterwards so we can talk and have some <laughs> have some, uh, some some laughs and some, some dessert. Um, and then we have some lattes on location who will be here to make custom coffee for everybody. Else. It, it's good to be here and I want to thank KOC for having us. We're going to talk um, today you know about our heritage but I think also about how our heritage informs what we do uh, in our professional lives um, and beyond that you know our personal experiences as Arab Americans uh, navigating American society and Chef Kamal does what we love most which is uh, cook <laughs> and uh, I think my own brother would love to be here he's a restaurateur in Santa Barbara he owns Freebirds burrito place, they all think he's Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's turn it over first to, uh, to Mike and, and ask him, um, <clears throat> you know, how does your background, your Arab American background, directly influence your life's work? Now, should I just pass this down? Mm -hmm. Chef Kamal. Okay, well, I'd also like to thank um, <coughs> PBS <coughs> for inviting us, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. So for me, it's probably more like you, Greg. I grew up in Washington, D.C., so I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. And grew up, um, I'm pretty sure I was also the only you know, Arab on our block. We were a block of lots and lots of kids. But I think because I grew up in, you know, in, in America, my English was, you know, my English was as good as it is now. <laughs> and so I wasn't different, I don't think, to other kids, but my name, you know, there was nobody named Kamal. And so that was a little hardship growing up. Um, you know, and people, some people would actually meet me and say, you know, what, what should we call you? And I would say, Kamal. And I was, well, that's what you would call me. So, you know, as I grew up, um, I really didn't even, I don't think I understood so much about, like, what, like my um, Arab heritage. I know my parents, you know, they tried to teach us things and we went to a mosque where we learned Arabic. But it wasn't until I think I was six years old, and that's when we first went back, when I went back for my first time with my family. And that's when I just couldn't even wrap my head around this place that we were coming to. I turned seven years old that summer. And this was a while back, so we'd come off the airplane and you'd walk down on the tarmac, and there are hundreds of people all waiting to meet, to meet us, because the first time my parents were taking, I'm, one of, I'm the youngest of four boys. And I'm, we, walked down to this sea of people who are hugging and kissing us and loving us and this was a whole new experience for me. And that's, I think, where my Arab, you know, the Arab connection to me as a Lebanese and an Arab um, came into play and when I understood my culture and my heritage a lot better, you know, came back to the States and then we'd go back every other summer. My, it would usually be with my mom, my dad would be working, so she'd take the kids and we'd spend three months. Never thinking that I was going to be a chef, um, but I always loved to cook, and my parents entertained a lot when we were kids. Um, you know, I was always in the kitchen with my mom. And then, you know, time went on. We ended up um, starting this catering company, which was, you know, a really great thing. It was sort of, I loved to cook, and my mom and I, you know, when we first started, when I was talking about the recipes, the truth of the matter was when my mom would cook, it was, it was the typical thing that I think a lot of people, a lot of ethnic people, when, when you ask your mom, you know, what's the recipe for kippi? You know, you want two onions, hey, you know, like they're, they're like this, and you want kimchi, you know, a scoop of salt, and you know, get the, the, the you know, and you'd be, really, mom? Is that, that's the recipe for kippi? So, you know, when we talked about doing this catering company, it was, that we had to have recipes, and I thought, and, you know, if we're really gonna go through this, and, and um, you know, we just had to do it, so we cooked. I was, at the time I was, I finished college, and I was a tour guide. I was giving historical, you know, historic and architectural tours of the East Coast, which I loved, but I, I knew that wasn't going to be my career. 
So we started cooking, opened our catering company. It was you know, very challenging for the first few years, but I think what happened to me is I just began to love, you know, it, it made me feel um, more connected all the time. Uh, my Arabic improved markedly because I spoke with, I had a lot of clients that were either you know, Lebanese or from Kuwait or from Saudi Arabia or Jordanian or Egyptian. And um, so, well, the Egyptian, like, Egyptian and Kuwaiti people, like, their Arabic is very different than ours. So that was, and the Saudi, mm -hmm. their Arabic, it's their, they're all these different dialects. Sure. But I think what ended up for me is I, um, you know, I was just, when, especially putting out these buffets and watching people who, you know, I would do, I used to do so many bar and bat mitzvahs. And I used to do weddings and, you know, for everybody, you know, not just, you know, it started off with Middle Eastern people and then it showed me that there are people who just love, you know, this, this, our cuisine. And I think that was always a you know, source of pride for me. And did the catering for 20 years, which I loved. Sold it because I wanted to change and I, you know, I couldn't, when I was at work, I was really at work and I was always, you know, focused on doing that. Moved to California eight years ago. I wrote my cookbook, and um, it was like a dream for me to write that book, and it got published. Um, thankfully, it's doing very well. And so today, it's still a source of pride. I think the book for me was to define my 20 years at the catering company, not to just stop the catering company and not have a book. You know, after all that. And so today, you know, I'm, I think I'm proud to just share through our cuisine, you know, our heritage, and I think that I think that food always spans all cultures. Because I've never seen people get together and sit and eat. You know, they love it. They love to sit and eat and enjoy good food. So, uh, Come on. okay, I think, like, for me, it would have to be a meal. Yeah. You know, it would be a meal. So I think um, it's hard to really narrow it down to a very favorite, but I would have to go with kippi. Kippi. Because I tell you what, kippi is actually, it's an amazing dish because it's things that you make with kippi yeah. that, you know, so we make traditionally, traditionally kippi is made uh, with but you know it's bulgur wheat we say a little bit bulgur wheat and meat and usually it's lamb but then it was adapted to beef and chicken but you know as the years went on and people's tastes changed now we do potato we do pumpkin there's fish there's shrimp there's carrot so it's really endless and what's nice about kibbe now is that you know you do you know it can be all vegetarian it can be completely vegan and then you make this wonderful salad it's a uh, uh, cabbage with beets. So it's malfouf and shamandar. And it has garlic and the, the two flavors together are amazing. And of course, you also do laban, uh, yogurt. Yogurt with cucumber and mint and garlic. So these, for me, this combination, although when we were growing up, we ate, we also make kibbe. There's two versions. You make a tray or you make a little football. It's called kibbe kebab. And they call it aras, which is like a little uh, head of kibbe. Honestly, as children, we used to eat it with ketchup. Ketchup and french fries. And it's, and it's actually delicious. I mean, to this day, it's very good. And my mother, you know, when we went to Lebanon, my relatives were like appalled that we wanted ketchup. <laughs> but try it one day. Kidney, ketchup, Kibbe, and french fries. Yeah, ketchup, that's, it's that's a big winner. Well, you really hit it when you mentioned the theater of Lebanon. Uh, you know, that's, that's my favorite. And forward, I wondered, uh, I'd like to ask a question of all three guests. Um, you know, pressures or misunderstandings that, that, you've, that you've encountered because of your background. Uh, I, I suppose we can all, we all have a horror story or two. Kamal, have you had, you know, some incidents where your background hurt you? You know, I don't think that I've actually had any, you know, situations where I was discriminated against. And again, I think it's because I was born and raised in America and, um, I think I, I, what I run up against more is misunderstandings, are people who just misunderstand yeah. what being Lebanese is, what being you know um, uh, from Iraq is, from what being from you know Jordan, you know Jordanian or whether Egyptian, and that's that's I think that's what I sort of react more to, and I'm making people understand. When I was a kid, it really was my name, and 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 much like Ferial just said, her husband, you know changing his name to Wally to sort of, you know, sort of fit in and it's easier for people. And I have a lot of relatives that did that. And it's not that I, you know, at a young age, I, you know, it's not that I made a decision. My name was Kamal. You know, it was plain and simple. My name was Kamal. And so I never wavered. It was, and it's not, it's, it's two syllables. Kamal. You know, it's not, it's not like it was a very hard word to say. And so I agree with what you said. And also my mother um, is, is a very strong woman like you. And so I think, 
I grew up in a house like that. I grew up in a household where, I mean, I never felt, you know, I, I didn't grow up feeling ashamed or different or, you know, embarrassed. And as a matter of fact, you know, all the kids in the neighborhood loved to come to our house because my mom was cooking all the time. <laughs> you know, so all these kids were at our house. So I, it, being a Lebanese was a good thing in, in our neighborhood, you know. Right. And friends and family would come. And so that was a good thing. I think what I experienced growing up, and again, I don't think it was discrimination. It was misunderstanding is like of our people. And, you know, then people would say things like, I mean, people would say things like, what's wrong with your people? And then you, know, you have to categorize what you're going to respond to some people, because there's some people I, I just decide not to answer because I think this is not going to go anywhere. But most people, I say, you know, what, first of all, what does that even mean? You know, like, who are you calling my people? Because people lump, the, you know, Arab. They just think we're all Arabs. And so they think that, you know, I was, I was literally at a book signing party years ago, and a woman came up to me, and I, I thought, at first I thought she was joking, and she seriously said to me, aren't you from that country, like, you know, they, they have those things on their heads and they're running around the sand? Oh. And I thought, okay. So I said, you know, I think you have us confused. I said, there's, actually, there's no sand in Lebanon. We have, we have no deserts. And so, you know, maybe, maybe I'm a kasut, but I said, actually, there are people who wear turbans on their heads, you know, they're Indians, and there are, you know, all sorts of people. So I'm really not sure what you're talking about. I said, Lebanon, I don't know if you've ever been there or read about it. It's, it's a beautiful country. It's like, it's, it's actually considered to be one of the most beautiful places, the destinations in the world that you could have gone to in the 70s. And actually, it's beautiful today. I mean, you still go there, and it's, it's beautiful, like, like any country, you know, any country, Israel, Jordan, you know, any place you go, there's beauty in every single Palestine, in every single country, there's beauty. So I think what I do, and what I'm sort of spreading with people, especially, and this is what I love about the food, and even the difference of the food, like something that I make that might be called, um, you know, like lubi bzeit, in another culture they'll have, a, which is a green bean dish. Some people will tell me, or some, this is what I always run into, we make a lentil thing called the mjadara. We take lentils and rice and caramelized onions. We sort of puree it into this, um, almost like a hummus, like a you know hummus. Some people say you puree it. We never would do that. So it's you know it's the difference between the cultures. And what I love about food is I keep learning so much about other cultures, and they learn about ours. And even in Lebanon, you can go from just one village to another village, and the same dish is completely. I mean, the basics are there but it's different. So I think what I've come up against is not discrimination, but I think it's because my situation is different, but it's misunderstandings. And I'm always happy to talk about, you know, share like what my experience is with people. And they seem to now, as, you know, especially as adults, people want to, they seem they want to learn and know more. The great equalizer, a good, a good meal. That's right. You know, nothing says love yeah. like, like food. Well, I want to thank on behalf of all our speakers, uh, KOCE and PBS and, and Ashley in particular for her great job organizing this. Thank you for a, a good spirited audience as well. And I hope you'll all enjoy some kippy pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs>